hey, you know what? Jesus, do you love me? And I hear a resounding, daughter, I do, from the most handsome man who has ever lived, ladies. You don't need any more than that, right? We're after true love here. And there's a way to get to true love. You can't take this way. It's not going to make us happy. The way to true love is to veil your body and give it to a gift as your, for your future husband. And pray for that man, right? Pray for him. And don't settle for less. Wait. Okay. Hopefully our screen will hold up. We're almost done here. Thank you guys for your attention. Um, we, we just want to say that maybe what we we'll talked about is connecting with some of you guys out there. Uh, maybe you have struggled with this. Maybe you've had sex already. Maybe you've had an abortion. Maybe you're struggling with pornography right now. Whatever it is, if you want to change God's mercy is always there. And I can talk about it, Meg can talk about it, how no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, there is nothing so horrible that God doesn't want you back. We have one of my favorite stories, it's from Luke 12, or Luke 15, it's uh, the prodigal son. About how two sons, one son takes all his, his father's wealth, goes and blows it in modern day Vegas, on hookers and on gambling, on booze, blows it all, and he comes back and he asks for forgiveness, and God welcomes him back with open arms. So we just want to talk about how there is always mercy and there's always forgiveness. And we as Catholics are so lucky. We have the sacraments to help us come back. And do we only get the sacraments once a year? No, we can have them every single day if we want to. That is amazing. Who here has ever thought that mass is boring? Okay, thank you for being honest. I have too. And I want you to look at this picture right here. This is one of my favorite pictures in the whole wide world. Tell me if there's anything boring about this. Come on! And, I'm, and we're so silly, you know, sometimes we need to pray so that this truth is revealed to us. Because when I realized this, I was like, oh my gosh, you can go to Mass every day and receive, I mean it sounds crazy, you receive the Savior of the world who is willing you into existence right now, who dreamed you up before the world began. And He wants to come in to your heart and give you happiness and joy. And yes, there will be suffering and it will be hard, but ask anyone who is devoted to this. It is the best, it is the best. And of this here, here is my heart, now give me yours. This was a conversation between a saint and Jesus. She says, Jesus, I wanna change. I wanna change my life. Give me your heart, Jesus, so that I can change, that I can love like you. And you know what Jesus said to her? Here is my heart on this altar. Even if you're not paying attention to me, here it is. Now give me yours. But in order to give him our hearts, we can't give him a heart full of sin that's been saying, God, I hate you. God, I reject you. I reject you. I reject you. We can't do that. We have to go to confession first. And it may seem a little scary, but Jesus, I'll tell you, is like an ocean of love. He is the least scary person. So go to confession. Look up on the internet a good examination of conscience and go. And then know that this is happening. You are so loved. Love God first, you guys. Love yourself second. He will help you, and then you will be able to love others. Got it? All right. So, so we started out with an activity, you know, to, to kind of humor at what the lies are. The one you have the marriage we talked about our presentation, the lies. And we just want to 
give you guys an opportunity right now, if you guys have a piece of paper, we want you to answer, write out any questions you have. I know we only have a couple minutes. Um, but if you don't have anything you want to write, just write something down. And if you can pass it on the side, we're going to have our, our helpers uh, pick it up. And we're going to try and answer if we can one or two questions before it's 8 o'clock is up. But we, we, we want to thank you guys for listening to us today. I know sometimes it can be boring sitting down in the chairs. And we, we want to thank you for listening and say once again that we're just talking from our life experiences and a lot of our friends have done the same. And we're standing up here and we know we're talking about a truth that's hard to follow. But we can say that it is worth fighting for. And it's what each one of you is made for. And on the back, we're also going to be handing out a sheet that looks like this. And on it has some really great, some great resources. Now, we can talk up here all day long, but what it really comes down to is each one of you is going to decide if you're going to make faith important or not. You're going to be confirmed that you know what, in five years, your mom and dad aren't going to be telling you to go to church. It's going to be your own decision. And you have to decide that. And if you're going to make this faith journey your own, then you need to understand it. You need to look into it. You need to see why do I want to believe this. And we have these great resources on here that talk about this. And it's broken up from dating relationships, uh, homosexuality, with porn, and we've got birth control and abortion on there from websites. And on the back is something that we really want to take time and do and do right now, actually. So if you if you have your your question, um, if not, if you're still writing. But on the back we have this quote from from Pope Francis that I'm going to read. Now is the time to say to Jesus, Lord, I have let myself be deceived in a thousand ways. I have shunned your love. Yet here I am once more to renew my covenant with you. I need you. Save me once again, Lord. Take me once more into your redeeming embrace. And we talk about to follow this is something that we need to be committed to. And we want to challenge each one of you tonight to, to ask, how serious are you about following this? We have five things that we want you guys to fill out. You don't have to show this to anybody. You can keep it. The first one is about prayer. And it, it's this question right now. I'm going to read it and I want you guys to put down an answer. It's about committing to praying more. One, I will talk to God about my relationships. I commit to pray how many minutes a day? If you want to live this, we have that relationship with Christ has to be there. So how many minutes a day can you commit to prayer? Two, we talk about how powerful Mary is praying the rosary. Can you commit to praying the rosary once a week? If you can, what day is that going to be on? Three, if you're going to stand up for this, you have to know what you're talking about. If you have a question about something, what are you going to look up? What are you going to do tonight to learn more about your faith? And when you struggle with, 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 with sin, if you have temptation, whether it's pornography, or maybe it's going, you're going to go now with your girlfriend or your boyfriend and you know you're going to have sexual temptation. What are you going to do to hold yourself accountable? Who's going to help push you forward to be stronger? Who can you count on? Put a name in there. And five, we talk about confession, how powerful that is. Lent's coming up. When's the next time you're going to go to confession? When's the next time you're going to make that a priority to start over with God? So now if you, if you can pass your questions, if you haven't already, I know we've got five minutes.
So, um, we've only got a couple minutes here. We're not going to be able to answer all the questions tonight. Uh, the running group is actually going to be back, uh, we think, in a month. We're not sure, but there's going to be a second session. So hopefully we can answer more of your questions then. But one question that someone asked was, how did I stop masturbation? And, and I appreciate the question. Um, and I would say, I would say one, it was through prayer. It's as simple as that. Um, I talked to a lot of my friends who are my age or older who, who struggle with this. And we talk about it. And oftentimes you want this simple fix, right? You want to be hypnotized. You want, you want something real easy. And that's not what it comes down to. Uh, to, to stop something like masturbation, it comes from, uh, from, from prayer. So what I committed to doing was praying the rosary every single day. I committed to reading scripture every single day. And I committed to talking to my friends to hold me accountable. Um, and if you're struggling with the same thing, I would encourage you to, to do the same thing. Prayer, the rosary, and holding yourself accountable. Talking to someone be honest about how you did, about how you're doing, and take baby steps, one step at a time. You're not going to solve it in one week and one day. It's going to take time, but it's going to be the best thing you've ever done. Okay. There were a couple questions regarding, like, is this wrong? Is that wrong? How far is too far? Um, so, for example, is it wrong to kiss before marriage? So this is a really good question um, because, I mean, how far is too far? It's a legitimate question. Um, and I'll say, we'll go with the kissing before marriage. I think an overarching rule, a good rule to go through in your head is, and remember, we're trying to distinguish here between love, is it love? Does he love me? Does she love me? Or is it lust? So is she using me because it makes her feel good or makes him feel good? And that's a really important distinction we need to make. And so this is going to help us answer this question. Um, kissing releases a hormone in our bodies. Um, it's really good for married people. It's called oxytocin, the bonding hormone. And what oxytocin does when it's released, it's released uh, when women breastfeed. I think it's released when women are bonding with their babies. And it's also released um, when men and women are intimate with each other in any type of way. So kissing, yes, oxytocin is released to bond you to that person. So this is very interesting. It's good for married people because it, it's like glue that holds them together. So do you guys kind of see where I'm going here? If you're not married and you're kissing someone and you're not sure yet, like maybe she's not right for you or maybe he's not right for you, it's kind of gluing you together and it's giving you these googly eyes to kind of see the other person in this light that makes everything about them look really amazing. So, as I said, very good for married people, but if you're not married and you're being intimate with your boyfriend or girlfriend, this can really kind of mess things up for our relationship. It can make us really hard to leave someone who we're being intimate with. Um, even though we know we shouldn't be with them, it gets really, really hard. And so my advice uh, with all these questions, how far is too far, if it's arousal, if you feel aroused, it's too far. Because at that point, oxytocin is being released, and you don't know yet if that person is committed to you. If she'll stand by you. If he'll stand by you. And that heartbreak of him or her leaving is miserable, right? We don't want to end up heartbroken. So the route to take is to take it slow. Set your boundaries. And figure out if it's love. And if it's love, then you'll have the rest of your life once you're married, to kiss that person, right? And so savor those stages. Savor, savor stage one of your relationship, where he kisses you on the forehead, or you give, he, she gives you a big hug, right? Savor those. And so savor each step, that's what I would say. If it's arousal, it's too far. Brock, do you want to answer one more question? Okay. Yes. Okay. Do 
we have one minute left. Okay, I was gonna, we got two questions, but I, I want to address one. We're going to talk about this in more detail. Um, if God is supposed to love everyone, why do so many people hate gays, especially religious people? And we didn't, we, we, didn't, we, definitely, we don't want to avoid this. We wanted to talk about it. It didn't really fit with our talk tonight. We're going to talk about it in more detail. But I hope everyone knows the Catholic Church does not hate gay people. It doesn't. And if someone tells you that, they're wrong. If, um, they're, they're wrong because it's the opposite. The Catholic Church actually loves them so much that they have the courage to stand up and say what we do. And the Catholic Church takes a lot of heat for this. So I hope each one of you is not embarrassed about this. I hope you know what it is and you can stand up and talk about what the church really says. The Catholic Church says that if a same-sex couple has sex, it's the same sin as someone who is boy or girl and has sex before marriage. It's the same sin. It separates you from God because it is not done in the right context. We didn't want to talk about it tonight. But there's four parts of what it means to love as God loves. That's to be free, total, faithful, and fruitful. And a lot of it is what we, we had with the wedding vows, where they ask us questions. If you ever go to an African Catholic wedding mass, they ask those questions. And for it to be a love, it has to encompass all four of those things. Free, total, faithful, fruitful. And when we look at same-sex couples and their desire to be married in the church, we say that it does not meet that criterion because they're not allowed to procreate. That's not how God had in mind. It's not what it was made for. The sexual act is a great act. It's beautiful. And God made it with everything in mind to be joyful, to feel good, and to help spawn new life. And if it's not done in that context, then it's not done in the correct way. And that is where the issue lies. And it's nothing to do with the church hating gay people. It's not. But it is what the right context of what sex is. And we're going to talk about it in more detail. Megan, if you want to say anything. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. I think there's a lot of confusion, and we'll talk about this next time. But there's a lot of confusion between that, like, sex equals love. And that love equals sex. And that's not true. Like, human beings are, um, we're capable. Love actually, like, think of the saints. Blessed Mother Teresa, John Paul II, our Pope right now, Pope Francis. Right? These people are all have chosen to live a celibate life, so no sex. And are they loving still? Yes! Oh my gosh, are they loving? Like, Mother Teresa picked up people with maggot-infested faces, and they're wonderful. And, but the point is that this is the life that God chose for them. This celibate life to offer up for something so much greater. And so, if certain people, certain people are called to a different vocation, not marriage. So if we think of those saints, all of us are called to love. Doesn't matter if you can have sex or not. All of us are called to love. And so people with same sex attraction, called to love. God first. God first, not sex first. God first. And he will make, he can satisfy every desire of our heart. Nothing will be lacking, nothing. We're, uh, we're going to close in prayer. Do you guys say anything, sir? Okay. So thank you guys for listening tonight. Um, we'll just pray together. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and in you. Good and gracious God, thank you so much for tonight. Uh, thank you for uh, the warriors that you have brought into this room. And I ask that you send your spirit and your blessing upon each one of them. Help them know of the love you have for each one of them. Let them know how much they are cherished by you. And I just ask that you give them a desire to want to know you more, to increase their relationship with you, and to follow the truth, to not be deceived by lies, but to follow you, the source of all love. And we ask that our Blessed Mother will protect each one of them and guide them to the path of true love. As together we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Thank you so much, Megan.
Gerard for coming and, and sharing uh, stuff that's not easy to share and that's very personal and it's from your heart. I, I really do appreciate it. So it's good. Um, so we're done now. Again, same thing. If you want to do Young Apostles next year, you want to do Rock and Water, you want to go camping, you want to make this stuff happen, you want to put retreat on, um, pick up a form up front. They're due February 28th. That's coming up uh, right quick here. So be sure to get that. Uh, be sure to get your second year stuff. And then please take a look at that back table, including I know there's a place where you can put your prayer intentions. So if you, like, ladies or gentlemen, have been challenged by the things that were said tonight, and you know you need prayers to make something happen in your life, to make your life what God wants it to be, then go there and put a prayer intention. These people are going to pray for you, okay? Love you. See you. Thank <laughs> you.